Hey guys, Jason with JW Classic VW and I'm coming to you from my apartment. <laughs> We're about to go down to the garage to check a few things out because we continued the troubleshooting on the fuel system and I figured out what the problem was. You guys don't want to stay tuned because I can't believe I didn't figure this out ahead of time. See you guys down in the garage in about a minute. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Well, what we're going to be doing today is replacing the fuel pump and initially bypassing the fuel regulator because, uh, actually, well, we won't do the regulator first. We'll do that next. But what I think the problem may be, because as you can see right here, I ran a temporary fuel line, and I'll go ahead and show you guys that path here in a second. I just temped up the line right, right up underneath my my step side here, and it just goes all the way down. All the way down. back behind here and it goes up over the transmission to the other side just to uh, eliminate the possibility of it being a bad fuel line and when i bypassed it with the new fuel line we still had the same issue with the car dying or acting like it was losing fuel so we're going to go ahead and first um install the new fuel pump, which uh, let me go ahead and show that to you guys for a second. So right now I'm running a Carter fuel pump and I'm going to be moving to this Daryl fuel pump. You can find uh, more information about this fuel pump on CB Performance because they offer it, but it always costs shipping when I order stuff for CB Performance. So I went ahead and found this fuel pump on Amazon and I'm a Prime member and an affiliate, as I've told you guys in the past. So shipping was free and it was around 40 bucks. So the price was way better too. I did look at the Carter fuel pump, the one that you see down there, to see how much it was gonna cost to, if I ordered a new one of those. And normally the price is like 70 bucks, but it was hiked up to like well over 90. And I don't know what that was all about, but uh, it was almost like they knew I was going to buy the dang thing. So they decided to hike the price up. And that is just not cool at all. One of the other things that I do like about this fuel pump is that it has the brass brass ferrules on it, which is super cool. Come on, man, focus, dude. So it has the brass ferrules on it. These brass ferrules. Well, you know what I mean because the zoom is acting like a bonehead. Oh my goodness. There we go. The brass ferrules, those bad boys. And then it also has on the uh, the inlet side a, uh, a little filter that you put on here, but that's cool because this is NPT and I could put a A&N &N fitting thing on there if I wanted to. That's pretty neat. So all in all, this fuel pump is, is a lot better looking quality. I have no idea how it's gonna run, so that's gonna be new. But let's go ahead and get it installed. Get the uh, the old um, Carter out of here, and yeah, let's uh, get it going. First thing to do is to loosen up this fuel line. And I'm gonna pinch off the fuel line, you know, like a pair of vice grips or something to pinch it off before I remove it.
So we have a few things we have to do to the fuel pump before we are ready to install it. I already added this little piece of line here that comes back to the actual line, the 5 16th line that goes to the back of the engine. We're going to go ahead and shorten the, uh, the line coming over to here because this is going to ground back to the chassis and I'm just going to use one of the bolts that are going down through it. So that's simple enough. We will just strip it back and then add a lug onto it. And I've got this big lug, which is honestly really big. Let's, let me see if I got a lug that's a little smaller. So I always strip off this insulation, the plastic like that. And then I put my own on my own heat shrink. It's just been doing that forever. So I just keep doing it. As you can see lug and then insulation insulation uh lug and heat shrink so make sure that it fits which looks like it will no problem yeah no problem i'll put the heat shrink on first always heat shrink on first then your lug lug see some people add no ox which is not always a bad idea if you have some readily available which i think i took my no ox upstairs so i don't <laughs> and then you want to go ahead and crimp it where are my crimpers dang it every time <laughs> well, there's my heat gun i'll need that in a second Heat gun. Where are the crimpers? Well, these ones have a crimper on it, but I just really have never been a fan of it. I have special crimpers around here somewhere. I'll fight, put them back in the toolbox. You know, where they belong. Hey, that's where they are. These ones are special. You can pick these up from Home Depot or Lowe's in, in their electrical aisle. They have a non-insulated and insulated side. Whenever you remove the insulation, it's non-insulated. Go figure. So that's what I'm looking for. And the crimp is just so much stronger with these. Oh yeah. Let's run from the uh, heat shrink up over top. And then we'll run it down. Good to go. Good enough. And like I was saying, it's just going to come right back around to the uh, bolt that's going to be right there. Now this one, the positive end, is I'm going to cut that back by the ways too, like right here, because I have a spade that I have to put on here, a spade end. This one's, oop, that's not it. It's it's uh it's fairly decent sized because it's the only one I have. So we're gonna rip off the insulation off of this and then see what we can do with it. Ooh, it's on there. Oh well, never mind. We're gonna break it and then not be able to use it. <laughs> okay, so I didn't have another one. So what we're gonna end up doing is a is a splice or a, a little coupler here. And then I'll run the heat shrink over top of it once we get it done inside of the, uh, the car. So, but we're almost good to move over there. I'm going to go ahead and install the little filter that comes on this thing. So it's this little piece here. It looks like a filter, but I don't think it is. It's, uh, it's like hollow. So I don't know if this is some sort of surge for the fuel. I don't know. Anybody out there know? I don't freaking know what it is. Go ahead and put a little bit of the liquid thread uh, 592, 592 liquid thread 592 on here to help seal it. Oh, that's plenty. <laughs> Look, that came out a pretty decent splooge. I like the way it smells, man. It smells good. What size is that? Half inch. 
Well, it's on there. All right, let's move over to the car, guys, and uh, see what we can do to get this Daryl fuel pump installed and see what it uh, see what it does. Well, one thing for sure, the new pump is definitely louder than my old pump. As you can see, I have it velcroed back to the brake line there, and this is where the power is velcroed to it. Pump goes this direction, and this is where it meets the temporary fuel line. So guys, I'd like to say that that was easy, but uh, holy smokes, Goose uh, fought me the whole way. I'm putting that fuel pump in there. Hopefully it makes a difference when it comes to how she's running. Uh, the next step will be to bypass the regulator, but uh, I'm gonna take her for a drive here in a minute after I get the tire back on. Yeah. Hey guys. So what was the problem with the fuel system and why was I getting so many issues with my pressure? Well, it turned out to be two things actually. The first thing was that pressure regulator it's not the right pressure. It probably needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to order a couple parts from CB Performance to fix that so that I can actually read the pressure on the back. I just made a cardinal mistake. What is that floating around? <laughs> I made this cardinal mistake that uh, we should never make, right? I assumed <laughs> that the pressure coming out of the regulator was correct. But as soon as I bypassed that, it, I got a huge difference in performance. And then I discovered problem number two. In the front of the car, that auxiliary, auxiliary eh, words, <laughs> the aux tank lever that allows you to uh, switch from the, the main tank to the reserve, the one gallon reserve for these older uh, Volkswagen Beetles, there's a problem with that. And I'm not sure if the problem is that one part of that valve is bigger than the other, but as soon as I kick down to the reserve, Fuel pressure is 10 times better. Goose becomes a level 10 dangerous <laughs> because the power is crazy, man. Uh, yesterday, when I figured this out, I got home and I wish I would have videoed it. But the smoke coming from my front drums, it was like, woof. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, uh, that was me that breaks smell. So. Brake upgrade definitely has to be a priority with the uh, amount of power that Goose is putting out. Very cool. So, I'm sure you guys are like, what about the fabrication, Jay? What's going on with the tunnel? Do we still have to replace the fuel lines? Well, yes, we, we're going to do fuel lines, of course. We have to do preparation for the fuel injection system, plus I need some more money to buy that stuff. <laughs> Let me show you guys what I've done so far for the fabrication so that you can bring you up to speed and kind of give you an idea of what the plan is with that fabrication. So come around.
So here we are, guys. And at first, I came up with this template with this brainy idea that I was going to just, you know, get kind of silly with the idea of how I was making this, this uh, window cover. But I'm still not done yet with the actual complete design. But the idea is, and what I plan on doing, is building an outer frame like this and the outer frame will be all one piece this will be welded together i have some more shaping to do because you know my 45 is going to turn out very 45 ish so i need to fix that but i'm using this uh this plate steel pretty much is what i picked up from one of the big box stores and this is a uh, 3 16th uh just bar the steel bar and I made the, the frame that I'm gonna weld together. And I have to I have to bevel both sides still to get the frame welded in. And then I have the, uh, just, just some sheet steel that I'm using as a backing, which this is gonna have to be shaped. And I'm still not sure how it's gonna work exactly. It's gonna, it's gonna probably be a pain in the butt to get it the way that I want to, but it's worth it. Goose is worth having a pretty cool window. And on the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the bar, have a, uh, a couple locations, like corner pieces made up to reinforce the corners on the inside. And that's where these riveted thread, uh, stainless riveted thread inserts come into play. These bad boys right here. Check out the description if you're interested in these. I have them down there. But uh, I picked these up and then I picked up the, the button nose edged hardware to go with them and it was all together for i think it was like 30 pieces it's like seven bucks dude you can't beat that deal and the way this is going to work on the inside with the corner pieces to help reinforce the window is i'll be able to have the rivets go through and i'll, I'll probably have to flush cut flush cut the rivet so that it works right from the inside but i really didn't want to like tap the the steel for threads because i think it's kind of silly when you can just pick these up and it makes the job a lot easier uh so i'm going to build the inserts on the inside and then all together once this is put together which is going to look really neat i'm going to have these rivets and the button nose screws spaced out pretty darn perfect around the outside <laughs> And painted. I'm gonna paint all this to probably make that area where I made the cut for the window uh, stronger than the rest of the tunnel. <laughs> once once it's all done and buttoned together. So that's the idea, guys. I know you've been kind of curious about what I planned on doing with the uh, the window because there's so many different easy ways just to cover that with a, a piece of metal but this is goose guys I, I didn't want to go about that an easy way or a way that didn't make sense to me and i don't want goose to be pissed at me for the rest of her life that i cut a chunk of her out without coming back with something that's you know 10 times better all right so that's the idea on the fabrication. More to come on that because if any of you guys have fabricated before, you know that it takes time and I'm pretty novice at this stuff. So yeah, it's just, you know, trial and error, trial and error. Cool. So that's that. So hey guys, I picked up this uh, little mobile phone device to go on my windshield to help hold my phone. I'm about to check it out and see what I think. I'll let you guys know if it's cool or not cool. Something you might want to look at. It wasn't super expensive, so that was kind of nice, and it'll stick to my windshield. And that is the part that I like. And this is why I got the mount, so that I could go ahead and put it in my car, and you guys could have this view of me <laughs> as I'm driving down the road, and if I want to talk to you guys about something, I'm not uh, doing it dangerously. So that's kind of cool. All right, guys. So I'm really digging this mount. One, because just the sheer adjustability of it. And I gotta clean my window because it all gross. But once this thing is on here, dude, I could probably pull the windshield off with this thing if I wanted to. Uh, you have an adjustability here that allows you to take it up and down however you want to. And then you can adjust here on the back. And then you have an adjustment on the back that allows you to move your phone up and down depending on how 
hold on. Yeah, how far up and down you want to go with that. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't have any charging built into it, but I like it because it's open at the bottom and or the sides, depending on where depending on where you want your charger to be. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test. Well, yeah, it has this two telescoping thing. That's pretty neat. It allows you to warp, warp, take it out, and back. So, like, I guess if you wanted to mount it on its side, you could bring it in or out, and uh, you can move it down farther out of view if you don't want to have to look at it or up and towards you. Which is cool because you guys know that when you're driving on your Beetle, sometimes the speedo <laughs> in your Beetle is not always correct. So, very cool. Check it out, guys. I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. It's not super expensive, so take a look. So we got the main stuff done today, guys. That's going to be really it. Uh, I wanted to spend some time troubleshooting and figuring out what's going on with my fuel system because I knew there was a lot more power in this engine, and it was starving because of gas. I had spent so much time blaming, blaming issues on the carburetors, and I've cleaned them so many times that uh, I knew that was not the problem. And I was starting to question my Magnus Spark too, thinking like, man, is this a spark issue? Is there something wrong with all these new parts that I bought? And I'm like, no, that can't be it. it, it I talked to my dad, we went back and forth, and I was like, it's got to be a fuel issue. So thanks, Dad. It was definitely a fuel issue. Um, hope everybody's having a good weekend. I hope you're all getting out there working on your cars. To all my new subscribers, thank you so much for coming on over and clicking subscribe and the little dingy belly. Hit that dingle belly for notifications. All my subscribers that have been here from the beginning, you guys are the best. Get down in the comments, make some comments. I love talking to you guys and helping you out with your projects. Hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I'm on there. Hit me up on the Facebook group. I'm definitely in there. If you have any questions, any problems, if, if you just want somebody to, to knock some ideas off of, feel free to hit up the boards. Uh, I'm very responsive. The email for, for the channel is also down in the description. And also my top five, I switched it to top five, uh, Volkswagen related YouTube channels are down there as well. Hit those guys up and share some love guys because without you, without the subscribers, without the audience, we wouldn't exist. So thanks again. Can't wait till next time to get back to work on this fabrication stuff. This is Jason with JW Classic VW and I will talk to you on the next one.